going to be doing a video on our Christmas budget. I woke up this morning feeling so cruddy. I don't get sick very often, but I feel like I'm starting to get a cold. So I just feel really like out of it. So bear with me, but Christmas is just creeping up on us. I don't know if, if anyone else feels the same way, but I just feel like, hello, like Christmas just popped out of nowhere. I think with the birth of Adeline just being last month, really just like blindsided me. And it wasn't until a couple weeks ago that I realized crap I'm so not ready for Christmas. I wanted to do a bunch of Christmas videos for you guys. We're gonna be doing some Christmas activities this week. I always like to show you guys what I got my kids for Christmas but it might be just a little bit late this year. So hopefully I can get that video to you guys sometime this week as well as a stocking stuffer video. But this video today is going to be all about our Christmas budget. I have done this video for the past three years, I believe. So if you would like to see how our Christmas budget has changed over the years, I'll have those videos linked down below. But to be completely honest, our Christmas budget hasn't really changed a whole lot in the last three years. I started Christmas budgeting, like I said, three years ago when I started making videos about it. Before that, I just had, let's see, how many, I don't even know how many kids I had three years ago. But it wasn't until recently that I felt a need to actually budget myself when Christmas came around. Christmas itself is already super expensive, and then when you add seven kids into the equation, it kind of just is insane. This year, we have stuck to a very, very strict Christmas budget. My ideas with budgeting have kind of stayed the same, but this year we've just been a lot more strict on what we spend and how we spend it. So if you guys are interested on how we budget Christmas for seven children, this is the video for you. So for our Christmas budget, we average at $100 per child. Whether or not that includes presents from the man in the North Pole has kind of changed throughout the years. Last year I included it in the price this year was not included in the price. So it seems like depending on what I get the kids for Christmas that year, how we budget it seems to just kind of change just a little bit. So this year, what we did is we stuck to a very strict $100 budget for each of the children. However, that does exclude Adeline, only because she is a month old, she has absolutely no idea what Christmas is, what presents are, and on top of that, what do you buy a one month old? I don't really know. What we did do for Adeline is we got her a couple little things that we were gonna buy her anyway, and we're just gonna wrap them, mostly for the sake of the other kids. We did make sure though that we talked to Santa, and he is bringing her a gift, again, just for the sake of the other kids. So Adeline's budget this year was like very minimal. It was probably like, I, I honestly couldn't even tell you. It was very, very, below the budget because over the years she's gonna obviously care more so we definitely didn't do anything crazy for her this year it's mostly just focused on the other kids what I've noticed too throughout the years as we're starting to have like older children our oldest child is seven now we have a six-year-old a five-year-old two four-year-olds a two-year-old and a newborn the older kids presents are so much more expensive than the little baby presents it wasn't until this year that we have started really reconsidering quantity over quality. In the past, when the children were younger, it was all about quantity. It was about how many presents I got, how many I get to open, how many does that person have, how many do I have, and I really tried to keep it fair. This year, however, it has been a little bit different in terms of the older kids are starting to get less presents overall because the quality of them are getting better. Our three oldest children definitely got less presents overall than the younger four, or at least the younger three, not really Adeline. And I'm hoping that that'll kind of teach them a life lesson too throughout the years that quality over quantity is the way to go so like I said we do stick to our $100 budget and each child's budget is spent differently according to them and their personality and what we think that they would like the only kids that I really try to keep like equal in terms of quantity is the twins and that's just because everything in life is a competition with those two so I did make sure to either get the same exact present or like a variation of the same present just because that's what works for them but like I said the older kids are definitely are starting to get less presents because the quality of the presents are getting better. So how we spend our Christmas budget. This is something that I have definitely kept the same over the years and I'm trying to get better and better at. If you've been watching me for a long time, you know that I am so, so into secondhand shopping, thrift store shopping, yard sale shopping, coupons, sales, all kinds of stuff like that. And that definitely still applies when it comes to buying Christmas presents. This year, I did not do a whole lot of thrift store shopping and the main reason I didn't do too much thrift store shopping this year is because I bought 99% of the presents online because I'm home with her all the time and just like arranging somebody to watch all the other kids for me while I could go out and like buy the presents it just didn't work out this year it was just so much easier for me to buy 
online. We did the majority of our shopping this year with our Amazon Prime account because it has free two-day shipping. And if it wasn't bought on Amazon, it's a very good chance it was bought at Target. And at Target, they have an app called Cartwheel. And I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. These are just really like what I use. So there's an app called Cartwheel if you shop at Target. I'm pretty sure most people know about it now. They have daily deals on there as well as like longer deals on there and toys are a very very popular item that you can find on cartwheel to make sure you get the best deal so really the secret to my Christmas shopping this year was mainly buying items that are on sale using cartwheel when if I was at Target and using Amazon Prime to get the majority of our presents but I've noticed this year because ha I haven't had the greatest luck with Amazon in the past around Christmas time but this year I've definitely noticed that if there was like an item on sale at Walmart or, to or Target I would check that same item on Amazon and notice that they also had that sale price. So I don't know what Amazon has done recently, but they've definitely been doing a better job, at least that I've noticed with the things that I've been interested in buying. I just have one rule when it comes to buying Christmas presents or actually anything in general. I almost never, and I can say this with extreme confidence, buy anything at retail price. It has to be on sale, it has to have a coupon, it has to have a cartwheel, or it has to be secondhand. I literally never buy anything at retail price. It is an extremely rare circumstance if I happen to buy something at retail price. So how I keep track of all my Christmas budgeting is um, the same thing that I've kind of done over the years. What I do is I literally just have a notes app on my phone and I just really like the convenience of not having to like have an app or anything or have internet access. I can just pull it up on my phone in my notes. Now they let you, if you have an iPhone, you can have a shared folder with somebody else. So Chris and I will have a shared folder between each other where we can update our Christmas list accordingly. So let me see if I can show you. I have a list of all of the kids on here and it has the name of the child, what I got them, how much it cost, and then I always talk to Santa too and ask him how much his present costs and make sure I write that down as well. So. That is how we keep track of who gets what and how much they are. That way I'm not roaming around the stores thinking, did I buy this for her? I don't know if I bought this for him. How much do I have left in the budget? I just have it all in one place. I can bring it up. I can total it in my head real quick. Or some of the times I'll just have the total already at the bottom. And then I'll even cross off kids as I go if they have met their budget. So that is pretty much how we did our Christmas budget this year. I've been slowly changing it over the years, just little by little. And I am always, always open for suggestions. But this is what has been working for us for like the past three years or so now. I always, always, always try to start buying Christmas presents early in the year. This year I failed very badly at that, but next year I'm really hoping to get my Christmas game on in like June. The hard part with that though is that a lot of new toys come out towards the end of the year and if your kids watch TV, please tell me I'm not alone with this, but my children literally want anything that comes on a commercial. So that is how we are doing our Christmas budget this year. I would love to hear ideas from you guys. Do you have a Christmas budget? And if you do, what is your Christmas budget and how do you manage that? through multiple kids. So that is it for this video guys. Definitely look out for a stocking stuffers video or like what I got my kids for Christmas. I'm planning on doing a bunch of different Christmas things. So make sure you leave your video suggestions down below. Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Snapchat, and Instagram. I'll have those links down below. And other than that, I will talk to you guys on Wednesday for our next video. Bye. Oh. <laughs>